in a collision, for example, the force is not always constant. And we want to know if we have a force versus time graph, how do we find the impulse? Well, if the force isn't constant, if impulse is F delta D, the delta T, um, then if for a non-constant force, it might make sense to regard the impulse as the average force times delta T. And of course, if we multiply the average force times delta T on a force versus T diagram, uh, we're going to get the area under the force versus T curve. In a simple case, uh, the force is just linear. It goes from zero up to some maximum and then back down to zero over an interval delta t. And in this case it's very easy to find the average force. The average force on a linear change, the average force between here and here is just half of the maximum. And then between here and here we're linear again. Since we're going from a maximum to zero, the force will begin to be half the maximum. In other words, when we have a linear, the force is the average of the initial and the final. The initial is zero, the final is the maximum, so the average is half the maximum on each side for each linear phase here. So, in this case, the impulse is average force times delta T since we're linear from zero to F max and linear from F max down to zero, then the average is one half F max and the impulse will simply be half of the maximum force times the width, which is of course, geometrically, half the base of a triangle, I'm sorry, the base of a triangle times half of its altitude. Now, usually the force isn't exactly linear. Uh, we might have a force like this. Uh, two objects collide and they have kind of soft exteriors, so there isn't much force there, but then they get into an interior where there's a lot of force. Uh, that the, the object solidifies after the initial contact, we run into the solid part of the object, and then the force peaks and comes back down and rebounds off. Okay, so uh, here the force might have this kind of a graph where we have a certain F max again in a delta T. If we hypothesize or compare uh, the area under this curve with the area under the triangle that goes from the initial zero force to the maximum and back down to zero, we see that uh, really there isn't much difference. We've got an area here between the two graphs and then an area here between the two graphs and this area kind of makes up for whatever's missing down here and you can pretty much see from the graphs that the two areas are still going to be pretty close. So in a lot of cases it's more or less reasonable to take the average force as half of the maximum and say that the average times delta T of course is going to be the area. So the area under the curve is going to be calculated from a maximum of one half F max. So we're going to take one half the maximum for the altitude, delta T for the width, and we're still going to get something like one half F max times delta T. This won't always be the case, but in the case of these two, this is a reasonable way to approximate the impulse of a force.